I could not continue going on doing this. So I stopped and meditated for a year and learned a lot about neuro-linguistic programming and did a certification and some other things. But I still couldn't figure out what mine was to contribute. So where I landed was instead of trying to be the action, I wanted to be the response and just follow any high vibration invitation that I receive. It was right around that time that a group of people came and said, we want to do this collective immersive art project that is creating immersive interactive environments that teach people to journey from me consciousness to we consciousness. We just don't know how to do it and where to get the funding from and we have no idea how to create a company and make that work and um, will you do it for and with us. So I'm here as, I don't know, a co-conspirator in something that we did from uh, 2017 till last week. Uh, and we called it Wondo. Uh, the name Wondo was because we're all under one dome, and if we fuck this planet up, there is no planet B. Um, let's see. Ah, so the vision uh, was to activate a collective of artists, technologists, entrepreneurs, uh, to use interactive art and immersive experience to inspire collaboration, connection, and community and invite large audiences to shift from me to we. Um, and it resulted in the end in an uh, over 20,000 square foot mixed reality destination on Market Street in San Francisco that was open from in October in its earliest version until June. Um, we had 100,000 visitors come through uh, we also brought a mobile version of it to the largest gaming com conference in the world. Um, and as I said, just um, close the doors. Um, oh, hi. Hi. He's an old friend of mine. <laughs> He's running man. Um, yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about it. What was the inspiration to do it in the first place. I think we're at a very precious time. Um, we're at a very precious time where our almost like tendency to escape presence and reality by buying stuff or getting somewhere is clearly coming to a breaking point. Um, and I hope that within all our lifetimes we will come to a moment when the majority of the energy of humankind goes towards self-evolution as opposed to buying shit. And um, we're also uh, arriving at a point in time where we all know that who we are is formed by experiences and to a large degree childhood experiences, some of which drive us alive long because they imprinted us. Now what's the definition of an experience? An experience is when you get simultaneously stimulated, you know, auditory, visual, tactile, sense of uh, smell and, and, and taste in a way that forms a coherent thing that your brain says, that happened, that was an experience. You know, you can deny teachings, but you get hit in the face, and there's no denying that that happened. You know, like, I don't believe that that happened because that person would never do that. It happened. And so the point is that technology allows us now to create experiences for each other. Experiences that hit you, they're called immersive experiences, where you're immersed from your visual sense, your auditory sense, your tactile sense, you can even add smell. Uh, and it all forms a coherent something. And the question is, well, what do we want to curate? What do we want to imprint on each other now that we're almost becoming curators of each other's experiences? The interesting thing is that when you look around what people do, and there's tons of money going into that. You can do VR almost anywhere now. There's uh, location-based entertainment doing it. And the top-selling things are like 
zombie apocalypse or um, be a star trooper and shoot some people and so on and so forth. So what we're really unfortunately at our level of consciousness doing is imprinting more violence and competition and imprinting more of the fight or flight nervous system. So the experiment was can we rally artists to do the exact opposite? No alcohol, no competition, no violence, no fantasy, just beauty and hopefully some inspiration. Huh. And you know, given that I'm not even an artist, but, um, <laughs> I will just give you a little bit overview of the project. So. Um, some people liked it. Um, we had over 50% of people that uh, give us five-star reviews, but we also had a whole bunch of haters, which was really surprising to me. Um, and we'll see if we can give you a little um, trailer. So the trailer will have uh, two pieces. Um, one is um, about the... We, we chose an augmented reality portion that um, augmented reality is essentially you put on goggles, you still see reality, so you see your floor and you see the person you're with, but you see light sculptures, you see visuals, but you kind of touch them. Um, they're kind of like appearing as if there was a tree here, and you can clearly see the tree, but you can walk through the tree. Um, and so we chose AR because the whole point of me to we was having people have collective experiences as opposed to isolated experiences. So that was the first driver. Um, the second one was because we're all deeply touched by climate, we wanted to not make it about a fantasy world, but about this world. So we took real things, manta rays and mushrooms and trees, things that can exist in this world, but we put them a little bit out of context. Either the Monterey was flying through the space, um, or we changed the color, and it was almost inviting a second look at the paradise we live in that we don't respect and connect with. And the third influence was, you know, we did a bunch of mushrooms to come up with ideas, so it's very uh, inspired by a psychedelic mushroom journey as well. Um, See if we can make this work. Oops. We can't make it work too many, because I see if we don't. <laughs> okay, we need to duplicate the monitors again, and now you get to see the problem of a Mac person with a Lint Windows system. Thank <laughs> you. 